Hello everyone and welcome back to the Manufacturer Series here for the official season in 2019. It's round number 13 and it's Majore in reverse. Now interestingly, this is a track I always knew it was a handling circuit. I just didn't realise how good at handling it was going to be, especially with the new physics check. Well, it's not really new anymore, but um, basically there's more understeer now, so handling is more impacted, so the better handling car has a greater advantage than it used to. So, before anything, live stream is in the description if you want to go check out the live stream of this one. But even so, let me get back to that discussion because way, way back in Austria Salzburg, a, a event I'm going back to in September, a year on, happy days, the Peugeot RCZ was racing here. I was racing for Peugeot and Majore was actually a fantastic circuit when I was practicing it. I heard all over people's practice times. I was like, Hmm, the Peugeot can do quite well here. And believe it or not, we did well at that event and we got a trophy, which you have seen on the channel many times. Well, the Audi R8 is now a pure handling car, so I went into time trial and was like, wow, this car is bloody quick, let's put it that way. So it was a P2 in the world in the end, but I could definitely see P1 in the world. We're right behind Igor. But anyway, we're on our quality lap at this moment in time with some very fast guys in here as well. My main concern in this one was Storm. Uh, because I'd seen some of Storm's practices and I couldn't get close to his race time which was about four or five seconds better than my best at this moment in time so uh, yeah it was a bit insane but as we come into this sector you saw we were one and a half attempts up but obviously that bit there with the X's is the handling section it's the section where the Audi is going to excel at so as we come through here now we're just going to clip that curb there happy days let's have it out in second gear we do that in third gear in the race and you see we're four and a half temps up at the moment but storm gets the timing now 57.2 i knew i could beat i was actually looking for a 56 here um so let's see what we can do into the last sector a little bit sketchy into the last sector there I had to hold off on the throttle a little bit as we come into the right hander now and round we go look at that a one flying lap a one lap shootout we've got going on here we've done fuel burning otherwise as we come around the last corner here you gotta be careful do not run wide here on the exit so we accelerate through. The nice thing about this being a handling car, no braking required so the car doesn't get unsettled itself. We head towards the line, we get a 57-0. Now we had been in the mid 56s in qualifying pace. So while I'm happy, because I knew I'd be in storm, I was still like 57-0, I could have done better. But even so, we're on pole position at this moment in time. Happy days, because it's exactly where we want to be. But we had storm behind us, I think. If Storm had started anywhere else other than P2, I would have felt even more happier than uh, than what I did. Mainly because that AMG is very good on its tyres. And of course, this is a tyre wear race. You see Koke in P3 there. So you can see some of the big names in here. Sutsu in P4. Uh, Carl Williams in P5. Followed by Rick in P6. Uh, Oscaro Engia in P7. Followed by Suzetti in P8. He's in P9. It's the Watchman in the Porsche. I was expecting the Porsche to be a bit higher, actually. That was one, one interesting thing, because Porsches are also handling cars, but it seems like they couldn't get to grips with it in EMEA. There's Aug, who, of course, was my Peugeot teammate in Salzburg in 2018. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Aug, as always. I mean, the fact we were the Pug drivers and we actually got a trophy is absolutely amazing. Uh, we both raced very well. I mean, Aug in the final race when we did the Red Bull Ring was amazing. But even so, we're going to kick off here. You will have seen my brake balance go straight to the front wheels there. Minus five straight off the bat because we've got to do what we can to save the tyres here. Eight laps on extreme tyre wear. MR cars get very sketchy towards the end. Um, so even so, we're going to kick off here with the opening lap. You can see I'm just trying to warm my tyres up. There's no weaving there. It's literally warm tyres up. I'm trying to make sure I don't have gold tyres. But still, we come into here and we definitely have cold tyres. You can see that the car's a bit sketchy. There's understeer in there. It doesn't really want to turn. Very sketchy. So one thing you can do at the start of a race is walk those tyres a little bit down the straight. Nobody's going to be directly be behind you in terms of making a move because um, we start in such a significant gap. It's not like the World Tour uh, at the Nürburgring or New York where the rolling start is very close. So it's one thing you can do there. We continue on now through that first sector. As you can see, Storm is really close behind me. So... I'm just, this is one thing I actually struggle with a little bit. Start of a race, I seem to be quite slow at the start of a race. And then my speed picks up on lap two. So the same thing's happening here. I don't know what it is. Maybe I need to try and improve that somewhat. But uh, continue out of that corner. And uh, we just go to the left. And then we're going to come back and take the racing line. That's all valid. You're allowed to do one defensive move, which I did. And then retake my racing line. So if Storm went for the move now down the left, I couldn't defend that. Because there's like two moves in my opinion. But even so, we come through here. Look, we have to dab the brake there. I shouldn't be dabbing the brake. It should be 
just a little downshift, let the car roll. But even so, we do this corner very well, and we come into here very nicely indeed. Obviously, Dirty Air is going to play an impact behind with Storm. As you can see Storm starts to drop off there. We'll have a bit, Storm will have a bit more understeer as well, being a front engine rear wheel drive car. So that allows us to get a half second gap there, which is exactly what we need. As we leave that corner, as I say, we do this in third gear. I mentioned that in the quality lap. Now, the reason we do it in third gear and not fourth gear, uh, sorry, not second gear, not fourth gear. Why would you do it in fourth gear? So the reason you're doing it in second gear is to avoid the tire wear because if you're in second gear, you start spinning the wheels up. Even like for a microsecond, you spin the wheels up, there's going to be a little bit of tire wear in there, extreme tire wear. That turns out actually out to be a lot of tire wear. So if you do it in third gear, it stops the rear rotating, stops the rear wheel spinning up nice and easy through the corner and that allows us to accelerate out. Now that last corner there, was a very strong place for the Audi in any handling car. You see we go to the right here, I see Storm isn't going to go for the move there so I pull back in nice and early so we can take a normal racing line. So the reason handling cars are so good there, if you brake you're going to unsettle the car a bit more because braking obviously causes bigger weight shifts in the car. So if you can avoid braking in any corner and just roll it through, use engine braking, it's actually better to do that in these kind of races, especially where tyre wear is concerned because braking as well causes tyre wear. So try and avoid braking, you actually do gain a lot out of it. As you can see, we did there. So we're still three temps uh, ahead of Storm at the moment. I'm a little bit worried being three temps at this moment, but we come through here, we absolutely nail that corner and you can see the gap that we pull straight off the bat. So I'm pretty happy with that. Coming into this left hander again. This is where the car will get sketchy later on. Camber's there, the weight shifting quite a lot. Heavy braking zone. The Audi just wants to slide, slide and slide. As you can see that gap, well it's coming down. It's six temps at the moment as we continue on into the left hander. You can see we're five seconds upon our time. It's actually into the 57s in race pace, which is actually very quick indeed. 57.9, 57.8 is supreme race pace. That's where the perfect laps are. Unfortunately, we just messed the S's up a little bit there, so we're potentially not going to get that 57, but even so, we're still six tenths up on our lap time here. And as you can see, we've pulled that gap on Storm because the tire wet at the moment is not having an impact on the Audi. We're allowed to race at our full potential with a little bit of tire saving in there. It's a happy day. So as we jump to the TV camera now, let's have a little look at the action. Um, and you can see me and Storm there. And we've got that little bit of a gap to Koke, uh, Tsutsu and Carl Williams there a bit further back. I think Rick is also in that battle just at the very back of that pack as well. So some big names that you recognise. These guys have all been on world tours as well. Apart from Storm, who will be going on his first world tour um, in a week or a week and a half's time where I will uh, meet Storm again. So for those that don't know actually, me and Storm have been racing before Grand Tour as well. We raced in Project Cars. So um, I know Storm's a very quick driver because I've raced him on Project Cars. So I'm very well aware of his capabilities as a sim driver. And I know he puts in a lot of effort as well. I know he put in a lot of effort for this race, um, which is why I had to basically try and do the perfect race as best as I could. As I say, if Storm was in P3, I wouldn't be worrying as much. It's a hard track to overtake on. When you've got this sort of environment where the handling car has a handling section before the long straight, any car that's supreme on speed is going to have a hard time because they're going to understeer mostly. And that way the MR car, the handling car, can get away. And before the FR car, the speed car can catch up to you, it's too late. You're into the next handling section, you can pull away again. So that was my goal here. Just keep doing laps, laps and laps, get it right. And as you can see, smooth run through there. And we just pulled to the left hand side there. We just waited a little bit before we did it that time. That's a tactic I sort of sort of learnt off Adam Siswillow actually, GTP Adam. Um, if you or Williams Adam now, should I say, not GTP Adam, it's been a while. Um, but yeah, it's a tactic I learnt where I normally just move off straight away, but actually if you wait or delay a little bit and then move, it catches them more on surprise. So you actually may gain more out of it. It's kind of an interesting tactic. You see that gap is still growing between Storm and Koke there. Koke in that BMW M6. Um, as we come through left hand, you can see that gap is about where it was last time as well. As uh, we continue up the hill, I love GT. Honestly, it looks amazing. Even with this dim light, it still looks bloody good. As uh, we continue up the hill now towards the left hand, you see Storm gets very close, and that's what I mean. Handling section, by the time Storm catches up with Slipstream and being a slightly faster car, it's too late at that point. And then we continue on with a race. Uh, the only thing we've got to do is not make mistakes. That's the critical thing here not make mistakes. We come around there as well. I was doing that corner slightly differently to Storm as well, I found. Storm used to gain quite a lot in that first hairpin and then I would pull away before the second one. But even so, we cross the line. We're actually going to advance a little bit further on now. It was the same old, same old. You see Tyway is starting to have an impact here. Lap number five. Our lap times on the right, all 58s. We're in the perfect place at this moment in time. 
terms of lap time. Our first lap was a little bit uh, slow, but after that we've been going very well indeed. You can actually see on the TV camera, just in the top right side, you can see that gap has grown even more between Storm and Koke as well. There you go, you just saw that there. So going through this left hander, we still got Storm at bay around that half second mark. So at the moment, all looking very promising indeed. Uh, one and a half attempts down on our fastest lap, so you know we're still pumping in these laps, even though our tire wear is getting worse. As we clip that curve beautifully, that brings the car around a little bit. That's exactly what you want as we come into the braking zone here, and uh, we turn in, and oh, you just see the car get a really weird uh, sort of snap over steer. I went to catch it, and it went all a bit wonky there. And I can see Storm really catching me up here. Very critical that he's catching me up here. So into the Yetis we're going to go. We're still the lead car here, so Storm can't really make a move here. It'd be very dangerous to make a move at least. So I've got to try and make sure no mistakes here and survive. So the, the, the reason for the snap over here was that slight tyre wear. You can see again there, the car wanted to rotate. We caught it before it happened as well. And a bit more over here. here. You can see we're pushing now. We're trying very hard to stay ahead of Storm, but Storm is only three temps behind us. You saw how much he caught up to us last time um, when we were on this straight on this video. So we leave that corner, three and a half temps up on Storm at, at this moment in time. We head towards the left hander here. Is Storm going to catch us? No, he's not. We hit the braking zone, but that gap now is going to drop again. Um, or go up, apparently. There we go. Three temps uh, as we come around this corner now. We're going to get a little bit because it's corner, of course, and we're a handling car. Come into the braking zone, and again, we try and turn in, but we miss the apex a little bit there. See, Storm is right behind us. As we come into the right hander, we accelerate out more oversteer again. We get a good exit there, or a fairly good exit. So I think, okay, I'm three temps up. We can continue on. That's a very bad lap, that 59.4. Very bad on that lap. So we come into this first corner. Look at that radar now. Storm goes for a big, big move here. And um, I, I actually initially thought that Storm was going to um, overshoot the corner with that move. So I actually tried to go for the cutback. There was a slight tap there. Obviously, going for the cutback, there was, is going to be a slight tap. But Storm actually made it work. It was a really, really, really good move. And some of you will be going, Tidge, why didn't you defend? Well, for one, I didn't expect it. Um, you mean you saw earlier on as well that Storm didn't go for the move, but same sort of gap. Um, and it was out of nowhere. I mean, he was on the racing line. He broke. He broke much later than normal. Actually stopped it on the apex as well perfectly. It was a really, really good executed move. And when they happen, they happen, guys. Irrespective. You just got to go, yeah, good move. So my concern at this moment in time is I'm not going to catch Storm at this moment. He's going to have better tyre wear. As I say, he, he was doing much faster race times than I was. Like four or five seconds um, total time quicker than me. So, And that was all in these last few laps where I lost the time just because of the car getting very unstable. And you can see that here. I'm overlaying a lot. Uh, thanks, David Peril, for that line. And uh, you can see I'm just trying to survive with this car. So that's all I'm going to do at this moment. I want Storm to drag me along. That gap to Koke, only 1.4 seconds. And... P2 in this race, I'm happy with P2. Trust me, I would be very happy with P2. So that's my goal at this point. Storm's going to accelerate away. I already know this. See, he goes to the left. I'm not going to... Uh, my, the reason why I stay to the right is to indicate Storm, I'm not fighting you at this moment in time. You just take the normal racing line. I'll follow you. I'll try and use that slipstream as best as I can just so I can survive and stay ahead of Koke. You can see a lot of cars with Koke. Koke's there, Sutsu's there, Rick's there, and Carl Williams. That's four cars. I could drop to P6. I don't want that to happen. So we come around this left-hander. And then the right, you can see that gap is already increasing really, really rapidly. And that's all because of that right rear tyre, um, more so than the left rear tyre. But we're going to advance now towards the last lap. And you can see that gap has closed between me and Koke now. So I am really trying to survive at this moment in time. As through the first corner we go... And uh, you can see we've got a little bit of um, sketchiness there in the car as well. But we control it very nicely into the right-hander. And then we brake, straight line braking as best as we can. Clip that curve, try and get the car around. Continue on and get around this next corner, which may experience some oversteer here, do we? No, we keep it nice and tidy this time. That's good driving there as we continue through the first sector now. Into the left. Oh, love the little cut there. Into the right. And... Please don't clip the grass. We don't indeed. So we head towards this heavy braking zone. This is where the car gets really sketchy. How sketchy does it get this time? Round we go. Oh, a little bit, but we managed to survive it this time. Do you see that gap with Koke stayed about the same? Um, and that's good for us because he's not going to catch us by the end of the straight. Remember, we're going into the handling section. So let's look at this on board now from in the handling section. Let's see how sketchy this car really is. As round we go. 
fifth gear and you can see this overlaying again that's to stop the car oversteering as best as I can so I'm just trying to keep the throttle on oh, a little bit of oversteer there I tried not to cut as much as well penalties worse if here here you could cut that corner too much you get a 0.5 or a one second penalty depending how extreme the cut was in the game but we managed to survive that into the left hander we go still eight temps to cocaine got up to nine temps now Koke defending from Sutsu here. We head up to the left hander. At this point in time, I just need to make sure I don't make a mistake. That tyre wear, the right rear is really dead. Into the left hander we go. And then into the right. Interesting fact, guys. I actually said to Storm, why don't you go drive the Audi around here? Same settings. He gave up on lap five because the Audi is a very sketchy car here with that tyre wear. Without it, it's one of the best cars here, if not the best car here. Um... With tyre wear, it brings everything to a bit more of a level playing field or, well, the Mercedes is always good here. But as you can see, we make no mistakes and we cross the line in P2. So we're actually going to take that. I know lobbies are a bit unstable at the moment um, and we could get penalties in the next race. I could have gone on to win the next race, but actually it turned out to be the best decision because somebody disconnected in the next race and then the lobby after that actually crashed. So that actually got us 36 points for our manufacturer. P2 behind Storm with a 56. It was a 59 race time, which isn't the greatest. We could have got two more seconds out of that. Maybe even the 56 as well. But uh, we were defending earlier on. A few mistakes in there. So, you know, it's, it's good for what it is. Congratulations to Storm for that victory. Congratulations to Koke for defending that entire race as well. Uh, but that's going to be it for me, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.